I'll continue talking about、um, things I discovered recently, particularly about science.、Uh, in my mind,、um, I have a model. Generally, maybe it's a bias. My, of course, the traditional,、uh, traditional classification of science is、uh, dividing science into physics, biology, and chemistry, and.、Uh, And my mental model also、uh, follows that. But within each of them, biology, physics, and chemistry, I always think that each of them has a precise and canonical predecessor. Something、uh, we need to know. We need to know each of them. What what are the ancestors?、Uh, what What are the history?、Uh, generally, physics is、uh, the ancestor of physics. Is, is definitely astronomy, the, the so-called the older science, and、um, biology. The canonical、uh, ancestor of biology is actually, for me, is actually evolutionary biology. Maybe some people would argue it's microbiology, but evolutionary biology is a、uh, is probably more fundamental.、Uh, Particularly, Charles, what Charles Darwin discovered、uh, via his、uh, research, his book *Origin of Species*. Meanwhile, for chemistry,、um, the ancestor of chemistry is a surprising one. It is alchemy for me, which is a pseudoscience today. However, alchemy is、uh, so so important because not only because the ideas in alchemy. Uh, were absurd, but also because people were so ambitious back then, and as a result, they really wrote a lot of books. They carry out experiments, so、uh, they laid down a lot of foundation foundational things、uh, for the development of chemistry later on. So I want to talk about、uh, astronomy today.、Uh, the reason is recently I discovered something very interesting about、uh, John Maxwell. John Clark Maxwell, the 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 father of、um, electromagnetism, um, um,、uh, the so-called second person in physics, who has done a a a unification. The first one、uh, was Isaac Newton. He unified、uh, mechanics, classical mechanics, with planets, all the how all the things move, gravity, of course, and then um. John Clark Maxwell he unified、uh, electricity and magnet magnetism. He f- he figured out、uh, the relation between electric field and magnetic field. But I'm not talking about electromagnetism partly because it is really very hard to understand. I do- I don't really understand them. The sixteen equations those are really、um, really phenomenal, very convoluted. What I want to talk about is when、uh, recently I was studying the biography of John Clark Maxwell, and then there was a very interesting anecdote in、uh, in his early life, when he was young, I, I think about twenty five years old. By the way, John Clark Maxwell died quite early. I think about forty years old.、Uh, it was quite poignant. I don't. I think he had some il-、uh, he had some illnesses, and he died very early. But when he was twenty five, he participated in a competition because I think back then in England that、uh, there was a university organizing a competition to reward people who could、uh, who could solve a problem. The problem was regarding the explanation of、uh, Saturn's Saturn's、uh, rings, the planet Saturn.、Uh, today we all know solar system. Consists of eight planets, and of course the sun as the star, and each planet itself、uh, res- has the moons respectively. Not all.、Uh, Mac- Mercury obviously doesn't have moon, and some 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 have、uh, moons. Today we know it's eight planets and one star.、Uh, the solar system. Among these eight planets,、uh, Saturn. Appears to be the only one who has rings.、Uh, it is a remarkable feature, very unique. And、uh, 
However, there was a problem. People figure out.、Uh, people were wondering why the rings of、uh, Saturn、uh, do not fall into the center of、uh, Saturn due to the center of gravity by by the center of Saturn. People wondered that,、uh, and probably because. Every single other planet in solar system used to have rings, and maybe they disappeared many many billion years ago due to the gravity. We don't really know because we can't, we can't know in the early formation of solar system, the so-called Big Bang explosion, whether how do how did planets look like their formation? Maybe they changed a lot over time, and this, uh, this was so long ago, like not. Even before the first life was form form on Earth, so people were wondering. Uh, at that point of time, people postulated two things. Okay, if Saturn's rings are made up of solid or even liquid particles, by right, you you using ca- classical mechanics, those rings are expected to fall. On a、uh, fall fall towards the center of Saturn, and eventually it will disappear. And and it does not. Those rings、uh, do not fall into center of、um, Saturn. Then people postulated the otherwise. Since those rings do not fall towards the center of Saturn, those rings must be likely to be fluid and most likely made up of gas particles. And and that didn't make too much sense either because, uh. From telescope's observation, the rings of Saturn did not appear to be gas-like. All right. Oh, by the way,、uh, I must first mention something.、Uh, I'm digress a little.、Uh, something very interesting in astronomy.、Uh, astronomy. People start started doing astronomy as early as classical antiquity. I'm talking about、uh, during Greek or Roman period, maybe even earlier. It may be during Egyptian period. I don't really know. The reason is because、uh, since classical antiquity, people could already observe、um, uh, six out of the eight planets on the sky at night. So obviously.、Um, Okay, five out of the okay. We let let's let's exclude Earth. Okay, we don't observe ourselves of obviously on the sky, but people could already ob observe five planets on the sky since classical antiquity. I'm talking about four four thousand years ago. People could see Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Those five planets are obvious on the sky. Thousand years ago, you didn't even need a telescope to observe them. And、um, of course, of course, this sounds counterintuitive for me at least because, to be honest, I am already twenty nine years old, and in my whole life, I've not seen, not even Mercury and Venus on the sky, let alone Saturn and Jupiter, these two giant planets. I don't see it with、uh, my naked eyes, and the reason is because today most of us live in cities, and even we live in suburban or rural areas. As、uh, there is simply so much of light pollution by the cities around us, cities nearby, and we all know cities at night that. There is simply so much of man-made light. As a result,、uh, it's almost impossible to witness Venus or Mercury by our, our naked eyes today. We need telescope. But however, thousand years ago, I believe in classical antiquity, it was easy.、Uh, at night time, people did not have much light. Definitely no artificial light, no electrical light, but only candles, for example. So it was it was very easy for people, ancient people. To observe so many planets as and stars、uh, at night on the sky, and、uh, also I, I don't believe、uh, they see they saw Venus or Saturn every single night. It was probably only a few rare astronomers. They were relentless. They kept observing the sky、uh, many nights over their entire lifetime, and only a few nights they happened to to see Jupiter and Saturn. Okay, coming back. So that's interesting. Uh, 
people could see those planets, those five planets, people couldn't see Uranus and Neptune, and obviously Pluto, it was impossible. So, so people couldn't observe Uranus and Neptune, partly because it's too far. By the time the light from the sun travel and reflect on Uranus and Neptune's surface, uh, they become quite dim. It was not possible. But today we all have a very powerful telescope, and particularly the Hubble telescope or uh, in outer space. So we can see every single planet very clearly, even Pluto. So, so there was this competition, uh, Maxwell participated in it, in order to explain and write and answer a thesis about what is the formation of Saturn's ring. Uh, Maxwell postulated that the ring of Saturn is not made up by gas, not by solid either. It was made up of many, many infinite number of very tiny solid particles okay that explain why the center of gravity of saturn uh, um, center of gravity of saturn does not really successfully attract all the ring particles into it because they are too scattered and and also that explains why do they look like solid so that was a remarkable um observation by maxwell uh, 300 years ago and only until about 50 years ago finally I think through Hubble telescope uh, people could affirm what Maxwell said is true all right so he, he 300 years ago he already predicted that and uh, this is about Saturn's uh, Saturn's ring uh, However, I would also like to further talk about Uranus and Neptune because those two planets are quite interesting. Uh, basically, the division of solar system planet is like this. Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars are called terrestrial planets, if I'm not mistaken, because they are largely make, uh, made up of solid. And then... Uh, and then... Jupiter and Saturn are just humongous in size, but they are also unique in the sense that they are made up largely of gas. So we call Jupiter and Saturn gas giants. And not only that, these two planets, besides uh, the fact that Saturn has a unique ring, Saturn and Jupiter, due to them being so big, they have so many moons. I think Jupiter has more than 100 or even 200, 200 moons. The famous moon of Jupiter is a moon called Io and Saturn has a moon called Titan, the largest moon in the entire solar system. And meanwhile, Earth only has one moon and Mercury doesn't even have one. And then move on. After Saturn, we have slightly smaller planets called Uranus and Neptune. They are ice giant in the sense that most of the partic particles made out of the uh, these two planets are largely related to ice. Some water particles, methane, Okay, but what is unique about these two particles? First of all, Uranus, uh, if you look at the picture, it's very spooky. It looks like plain blue ball with zero texture. And uh, But what is more unique right, is about Neptune. Neptune, right, people did not discover it via telescope. There was a really brilliant mathematician in, in France. I don't recall his name. A real, I think. He... You, literally by hand using mathematics using classical mechanics predicted the existence of neptune he was the first person because by then people already used telescope and saw uranus and then later on they discover in the within the orbit of uranus there was something very odd going on there was an obstacle and then through classical mechanics and calculus uh, this french mathematician was so was so sure that there is another planet nearby Uranus, uh, that is that is uh that is uh, uh disrupting Uranus, and then he called it Neptune. He predicted that. Bef before even uh seeing it using telescope, he was so sure there must be a planet. All right, so people found new Neptune using pure mathematics. All right. Uh, I think I'll stop here. Maybe I'll continue to talk about astronomy someday. So see you. Goodbye.